Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the Sunrise Theater where we're going to talk about taking your communities to the next level with the just announced Lightning Flows. Uh, it's going to be an incredible session today. I'm Eric Lerner. Uh, I lead product management for our portals business in Community Cloud. Up here I've got Sheng Lun Chen with me who is our rock star developer. He's going to show you what he's been working on. And I've also got uh, the lovely and talented Thomas Krokizik, <laughs> uh, who's, our, who's our marketing manager. Um, just a quick show of hands before we jump into everybody's favorite slide. Uh, so I have some context. We want to keep this content at the right level. How many folks here are currently community cloud customers? OK. Second question. I've only got two more, I swear. How many folks are currently using flows or lightning flows? Awesome. So last question. How many folks are using flows together in conjunction with Community Cloud? All right. We're going to fix that. Every hand's going to go up. And we're going to show you exactly how it's done. Without any further ado, let me get to the real talent, Mr. Thomas Krokizik. And, and yeah, before we even do that, I'll take this fun slide um, where we talk about forward-looking statements. Um, so. As usual, don't make your purchasing decisions based on anything that isn't G um, GA in the product today. But the good news about this session is that almost everything we will talk about, and we will call out any exceptions, is available today in the product. So the ability to put lightning flow into a community and expose that to external users, you can do that today as soon as you leave this session. And we, and we ask that you do. Thomas, that's the longest I've ever seen anyone spend on the safe harbor. That's, that's the good news about the, the safe harbor state. No, we're good, man. And we have this here, this handy slide, because we may not have time for Q&A and to delve into every question that everyone has. But in order to keep the discussion going, feel free to tweet us both, and we will respond with any answers, or we'll connect you to any of the people that you need to get the answers for you. Now, when we focus, first of all, on Community Cloud, we'd first of all like to thank everybody. And most people here are Community Cloud customers. So thank you for being trailblazers. And being on this journey for success for us, where we see this huge increase in the different users, the volume of it, people logging into your communities. Your success is our success. And we want to say thank you and also invite you along to continue this momentum into the year. Cool. Now, I have a question for everybody here. What makes a great app? Please feel free to shout out. I know it's Monday morning. People were at the equality event last night. Might have got late. But what makes a great app, Eric? Well, Number one on this list here just now is process, right? And alongside process, you need data. And to make this a really compelling story, you have to give your customers or your partners or whoever logs into your community a great experience. And those two components go hand in hand to deliver this. You know, if we think about it in, in, in isolation, if you have just data and there's nothing you can actually do to transact with that data, it's, great. it's a great start, but it's not the answer here. And similarly, if you have a process and you can go through this, you know, anybody that's ever been on hold on a phone and you go through security with your bank and they transfer you to somebody else and you have to go through security again because they can't remember that's you and those systems are not connected, that data is not behind that process, it's a poor experience, right? So today's presentation is very much a marriage between two brilliant components here and data that's delivered through your community and process that's delivered by Lightning Flow. Now, we're actually incredibly blessed today. Not only do we have Eric, who is the founder of the customer account portal template, but we have Arnob, who is actually the owner of Lightning Flow. So Arnob, can you stand up so everybody give you a big round of applause here, because this is your amazing product we're going to see. Thank you, Arnob. Now, Lightning Flow is process automation for Salesforce. And within Flows, one of the changes that we've made very recently is the ability to include Lightning components. So you can design custom components to do a wealth of phenomenal things within your processes. And we're going to show some of them in depth later. In addition to that, you can also use local actions to integrate with third parties. So every Lightning component process is client side. And that means that you can tap into external databases to do perform lookups to them, to connect with other systems, payment systems, um, lookups to external databases, you name it. And Flow will support that before it puts you back on that path with your process. And last of all, as we talked about before, all of these things combine for you to make your apps that you build on the Salesforce platform and with community clouds into process-driven applications so that there is that process behind the data to create that experience. 
Now, it wouldn't be a presentation without a demo, and we're going to walk through this today. I am going to drive, and Eric is going to talk you through his wonderful account portal template alongside Arnob's phenomenal lightning flows. Thanks, Thomas. That was a tremendous introduction. Uh, I didn't actually understand most of those words, but uh, I'm sure if I'd understood what you were saying, I would have thoroughly enjoyed them. Here we go. Watch this. Ready? One, two, three. Thank you, Eric. Exciting times. Thank you very much. Uh, we like to think about cr taking moments of customer pain and turning them into moments of customer delight. Your customer has to interact with your brand. In our case, that brand is Bright Financial, a uh, company we've created for the purpose of this demo. They need to reach out to support. They need to do something. They might have to pick up the phone and go into the phone tree, right? So what we've done with Community Cloud is taken your CRM data, the data part of that, and allowed you to surface to your stakeholders and build great experiences around it. So at the top, you can see with that menu, it's your Knowledge Center, which surfaces your Salesforce knowledge articles, support for interacting with cases. If you've got a partner community, that's leads and opportunities, as well as your accounts, of course, both Salesforce and third party via Salesforce Connect. Where this becomes really interesting, though, is these tiles in the middle of the screen. Each of those tiles we've set up to tie to a different business process. Any time somebody comes to interact with one of those tiles, it has the potential to be a moment of customer pain. I've lost my credit card. That's very annoying. I want to order checks. It's going to be a pain in the butt. All of these things, and what we want to do is allow you to take those moments of potential customer pain and make the moments of customer delight. So we'll go ahead and click on the apply for credit card, and that's going to take us into a flow which has been embedded inside of the community. We can click through that flow, assuming the demo gods are with me today. So far, not so much. <laughs> But what you would ostensibly see right here is a flow. Right now, it's actually a moment of product manager pain. Let's turn that into delight by making the flow show up. There we I've go. I've uh, fixed it for you now. <laughs> so there's a few cool things going on from Lightning Flows here, our recent announcement. First of all, we've got an image embedded right there inside of the flow using an embedded Lightning component. As we click through, you can see we've got a couple different credit card designs for you to choose from. Our customer today, Katie Boyle, is uh, a big Greenpeace supporter, and she's got Greenpeace branded checks. Based on that, that fact, which we know about her from the CRM system, we can surface a targeted offer. You can also see, because this is built on the CRM system, we're actually pulling out Katie's data so she doesn't have to fill it out. <coughs> Excuse me. So I have to go online in order to fill out this application. One of those moments of customer pain is having to fill out a bunch of questions 17 times, the answers to questions. So the point is we don't make you answer those questions because we know them about you. We are going to make you answer the income question. We don't know your income. That would be creepy. And last but not least, you can see we've got a little subway tracker at the top. That's beta. That's going to go uh, GA very soon. That allows you to understand your progress through the flow. You can also see we've got an embedded YouTube video via a YouTube Lightning component so that Katie can learn about this giving back credit card she just applied for. So that was it. That was just a really rich, nice looking flow embedded in a community. I want to flip inside the firewall for just a second to show you how we set that up, because it's really straightforward. For those of you who aren't familiar, this is our community builder tool. Looks just like the community, only it's a WYSIWYG editor, drag and drop. <laughs> now, each of these screens that are generated as well, when you saw that YouTube video and you saw the image that's there, each of these is an individual lightning component. And within each of those individual lightning components, what you have is the ability to customize, as you saw, drop in YouTube videos, content, everything that you need to be surfaced to that user. We actually have a series of components that Arnob and his team have been building out that are standardized components. So things like calendars, file uploads, all of these things are available, and we will share them across with you, some links and resources. If anybody wants them, please come and see us or tweet us after, and we can connect you. Um, but in addition to that, you can build your own custom components. So really, you can see that there's a lot of possibilities here to customize this, right? Thank you, Thomas. That, uh, that's very good, uh, good clarification to make as well. This is the Community Builder tool. Each community, each Lightning community, is based on a Lightning template. A template's just a collection of pages, a starting point for a community. For example, I want to make a portal, and I've got all the pages you'd expect in a typical portal, a home page, article detail page, case creation page. 
Each page is a collection of lightning components which you drag and drop onto the page. You do not need to be running lightning in your internal Salesforce org in order to build and use lightning communities. So, one of the components we introduced in the last release with the help of Arnab and his team is the flow component. I want to add a flow to a page. All I have to do is drag it and drop it onto the page. That's great, it's on there now, but it begs the question, what flow were you trying to surface? Because we have hundreds of flows inside of our complex financial services organization here. Mercifully, I've got a drop down menu right there that lets me just pick among all the flows in the organization. Exposing your business process to your customers is as simple as dragging it onto the page and picking the right one from a list. Just like that, I'm gonna hit publish and the next thing you know, I have actually pushed that experience live in the community. We've got a few different flows on the page and they're targeted towards different audiences, conversation for a different session, but you can target and customize those. If you'll do the old three finger swipe, Thomas. <clears throat> what I've just done is showed you what's in the product. Where this gets a lot more exciting is what's coming. And Sheng Lun Chen's been building what's coming. <laughs> and he's going to talk all about that. Cool, we're going to have a shuffle. So you're going to drive, Eric. I'm going to watch with the rest of you. <laughs> you get what you meant. Right. Thank you. Um, so, as we have said, a flow can be paused at any step. And then here comes the question, how do I retrieve a flow I paused? As of now, the only way to retrieve paused flows is in Lightning homepage. Uh, we can edit the page. Yeah. Yeah. And then on the components, we drag and drop this Past, oh, um. <laughs> we'll bear with it. And actually, what you're seeing here is a really good point to, to, to raise within this, as I buy some time for everyone here, is that the components that you see in this view are the exact same components that you see in the community builder. There's only a small line of code, as I'm sure you're aware, that you add at the top of that component to make it available for the community builder experience. Now. That could be a flow that's per pertinent to both an external experience and an internal experience, but it could also be that the component itself is something that is um, maybe just for the app builder. And in that case, you just don't declare it for the community builder. The other now, thing that's oh, briefly worth calling out is this is what we call our mobile one environment. Yeah. There are literally engineers checking code into this environment multiple times a day. This is not sandbox. Uh, this is not production. This is a literal development environment. So the good news is you get to see the absolute latest and greatest things we've been working on. The bad news is sometimes the demos spaz out. The good news is we've got a recorded version from when the environment was stable yesterday, which Jen's going to talk you through. I knew you'd have a yeah. plan. <laughs> um, yeah, have you played it? Yeah, I think so. Uh, uh, no. Yeah, so you can probably forward. A Pro little. tip, press play on the video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so this is the component on Lightning homepage now, uh, where you can see all the post flows you can access. Um, the interview label contains two parts, the flow name and the time when the flow is paused. Uh, post reason is what you type in when you pause a flow. Um, we have current element by a CD. That's actually the step where the flow is paused. And the owner is the user who paused that flow. So we can go back to. Um, and just um, while you guys are doing that, the reason why you might pause a flow might be oh. that if you're going through a complex process as an end user, it might be the case that you need to go and check some details, go and verify something with a spouse or a partner, whoever that might be. So that there's lots of reasons why you might abandon a flow in the middle. But that doesn't mean to say when you come back to it, you don't want to resume at the same point you, start, you, you concluded at previously. And similarly, you may want to hand off to an internal agent who may have something that they need to do on their end. Could be like a credit card check, so the flow pauses as the service agent then enacts after that. Just to give you that context. Sorry, on you go. Yeah. Back. Thanks, Thomas. No worries. So as Thomas has said, the problem of that component is uh, your customer or community portal users do not have access to that, pa that page. To solve that, we have built another component in, build, uh, in communities. So to show you how it works, you can go to any home page, uh, sorry, any page in communities, drag and drop this post flows from the component list on anywhere. And here you can see that we have a title. Since the word flow probably does not make sense in some communities, uh, for example, in this credit card application one, 
we better call it pending applications. And we have a delete button configurable. Um, we have maximum number displayed configurable. Um, so if it's on sidebar, you probably want to set it to a smaller number, maybe two. Um, if on a white layout, you can set it to a bigger number just to make your UI looks good. Um, we have so this delete button, if you want to prevent your user from accidentally delete a post flows, then it's better just to hide it. We have the button alignment. Um, so uh, let's publish this. So here are all the configuration we provide just to make the UI looks good. And once you publish it, sorry, let's refresh it. Oh, we're logged in as a portal user here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Logged in as the portal user here, so it should show up shortly. Uh, yeah. I think problems. for this portal user, he hasn't had any post flow yet. Ah. Yeah. Good point. Okay. So. So what we are going to show you is two scenarios. The first one is a customer, your customer pauses a flow, and then the same user resumes that flow. And the second scenario is that a customer pauses a flow, and on the other end, a customer's agent or an admin user can resume that flow. Yeah. So the first flow is that. Um, CD is the one that customer want to resume. Yeah, we've got to check with the accountant before we proceed. OK. Yes. Yeah, OK. Great. So the first one uh, is need help, free identifier, uh, identity protection. He needs help here. So the second one, CD, after five minutes, I rethink about it. I decide to buy it so I can click on resume. So as you can see, we're still logged in as a portal user now. Uh, you can see that on the right top, there, there's a portal plus. And once the portal user resume it and then refresh the when, when you refresh the page, you won't see the post flow anymore. It's gone already. And then for this one, free identifier identity protection, he needs help from customer agent. So as a customer agent, you can log in as maybe an admin user. And on the home page, or maybe we can do that in communities. We can do it from the video as well. Yeah. So on the home page, you can also uh, resume that flow. And once you resume it, uh, that flow would be gone. Probably we can resume it uh, from communities. We should probably also uh, cool. leave Show a minute them. for questions and answers. Yeah, yeah, sure. Cool. So we've got about a minute and a half left. Thank you very much, Chen. That's, uh, that's coming out in summer release, so you'll all see that in the real world hit the streets on June. Thanks, Chen. Thank you. What questions can we answer for you? We've got about 90 seconds, and we want to make sure that folks leave today feeling like they learned a lot. Question here, sir. Man. Maybe we should. Go ahead and ask. I'll repeat okay. it for you. Great. So <laughs> we're in the community builder there. It looks as if like there's multiple flows. Can we not just do one flow interview that would have different paths? That would sure. So the question, and it's a great one, is why did we have multiple flows on a page uh, in the community builder part of the demo as opposed to having a single flow with logic, paths, and trees? The short answer is you can and should do what you've described. What we're actually doing with Builder is audience targeting. So what that means is one of those flows only shows up for an audience we've defined based on CRM data. They own a Greenpeace branded, branded check, so they see the Greenpeace offer. This other person owns travel branded checks, so she sees the, the travel branded offer. So even though in Builder you see them all on a page, at runtime only the target sees the the uh, the right flow with the embedded logic you pointed out. And this um, is this is functionality that's not unique to Flow. <laughs> any component can be personalized within a community to target based on any of these criteria. Another question here in the front row, yes, sir. How do you pause an existing flow? How do you pause a flow? 
and what's the connection there. So on the, the flow component itself, you can optionally include a pause button. That's been there for a while. The problem is you could pause it, but there was no way to resume it or view it in a community once you paused it. So it disappeared into a black hole. So the problem Chen solved with that feature is that you can now see the flows you've paused, resume them, delete them, and they don't just disappear. Uh, we are at zero minutes and zero seconds, so I can take three more questions. Go ahead. Yeah, so they can, the question was, can you pause flows across multiple sessions? Answer is, it, it's paused indefinitely until you resume it, and you can resume it later in a different login session. Thanks, everybody, so much for your time. Uh, if you are using flows together with communities in an interesting way, come chat with me after. I'd love to learn about that. Maybe we'll get you on stage for Dreamforce. Thanks, everybody, for your time. Please do vote uh, and provide your feedback so we can learn on what went well. Thank you so much. Thank you.